brought to you by CCT. The BVI International Arbitration Center gears up to host its third annual arbitration conference held right here in the beautiful British Virgin Islands, one of the leading arbitration hubs across the Americas and Caribbean. The conference will explore how arbitration has come of age across the region, as well as shifting legislation, rules and practices, and how the ever more diverse roster of players are constantly adapting to the new realities of a change landscape, both in our region and across the globe. For its international roster of attendees, Arbitration Week 2019 in the BVI will offer a kaleidoscope of networking opportunities, including lectures and presentations from an esteemed international cohort of speakers, daily social events, and even a post-conference day sale to experience all the beauty and excitement the sailing capital of the world has to offer. Joining us from the BVI International Arbitration Center is the Chief Executive Officer, Mr. Francois LaSalle. It's time for Arbitration 2.0. We'll be right back after a word from our sponsors. Why you really running for a boss? You could have bust a hole in your head. I well, see you with the competition. It's mean about to bust a hole in your pocket. I could get my modem, please. Anyhow, I got something huge to show you. I gotta be sick in your head. The whole on string bean. Tain a kind of party. Check this. That's LTE1 for just about everyone. LTE2 for you and your boo. The whole on. Bam! Red solo, you feel like you're free. That's LTE3 for you and the whole family. Save even more on your internet with new pricing from CCT. Get LTE 2 now for only $149. Get LTE 3 for the new low price of $189. All packages are unlimited, so there's no overage charge. You don't have to run into Chaz for savings. Just stop by our store and sign up today. Come on over to CCT. Life unlimited. Mr. LaSalle, welcome to Tweet for Media. Thank you very much. We have lots to talk about as it pertains to the upcoming Arbitration 2.0 conference. But before we get into that, for the general public, persons within the community who might not know the role of the BVI International Arbitration Center, can you clarify that for us, please? Well, the BVI um, set up, created an arbitration center, which is an institution uh, with facilities, but an institution behind it uh, that is there to administer uh, disputes between um, businesses and our states. Um, and so this is something that was done to complement the legal offering of the BVI and the commercial court. Okay. Now the BVI Arbitration Center is hosting the third annual arbitration conference, which is under the team Arbitration 2.0. What can persons expect from that? Well, the, first of all, there is going to be a quite varied audience. Okay. Um, we're going to have a lot of local people, obviously, um, practitioners, essentially, uh, that will be interested in widening their network, participating to the different workshops and trainings that we will be offering, um, and, and, and just listening to world-class experts okay. discussing some of the hot topics in arbitration these days. Um, we're also going to attract uh, a wide Caribbean audience uh, so free people from St. Lucia, Barbados, uh, the Bahamas, Jamaica, um, that will come for, for the very same reasons. Um, and we're also getting registration from uh, people in New York, in the US, in Europe, oh, wonderful. Um, that do know some of the speakers, that do want to, to get the opportunity to visit our facilities and get to know the institution in the BVI. Um, and it's ramping up to be a world-class conference. I mean, the previous one two years ago, just before Irma, was already exceptional uh, okay. for a relatively new institution like ours. Um, but this one, the quality of the speakers, the organization, the topics, um, it is going to really set it apart. We, we, we're competing with conferences in New York, in Paris, and London. So it's pretty exciting times. Now, prior, before the conference, there's going to be, we're going to be celebrating Arbitration Week. Tell yep. us about some of the activities that are going to be held during that week, the 16th, 17th, and 18th of November, yep. correct? So we, we wanted to do more than, you know, merely getting international and local and regional speakers to, to discuss topics. We wanted to offer a platform for practitioners anywhere okay. um, to get the opportunity to sophisticate and hone their skills 
uh, in arbitration and dispute resolution in general. So we have engaged with the Chartered Institute of Arbitrators um, and, and Sean Greer, uh, who's based in Barbados, to host two, the two biggest courses from the Institute. Uh, and that will be the weekend before the conference up until the Monday. We're also uh, working with a QC in London and uh, my friend Chris Malcolm in Jamaica okay. to host a construction contract law training uh, for practitioners, which would which will hopefully attract a lot of interest in the BVR because we're still rebuilding. Um, we're hosting a arbitral women workshop uh, that will be free of charge. We're hosting a Russian network workshop. Uh, that will be free of charge. There will be the late Dr. Archibald lecture. Yeah, the memorial um, lecture. The memorial lecture. Um, and, and this is all designed to, well, create arbitration week, if you wish, and, and give the opportunity to people um, to learn, to network, uh, to get to know different players, uh, whether they're local or international players, mm -hmm. um, and, and just celebrate um you know, arbitration in, in a sophisticated and, 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 and a significant way. Now, a part of your uh, arbitration week, and particularly the conference, you've selected 12 very diverse speakers from across the globe, and many of them happen to be women. Why particularly uh, the influx of women when it comes to arbitration and the choice of women in your speakers? So very early on, um, the BVN IAC as an institution at has positioned itself quite firmly in favor of diversity. Now, gender diversity is one of those things. Yes. Um, racial diversity, geographical diversity, or other um, aspects of the issue of diversity. Um, we, we signed the pledge, the pledge uh, um, arbitration pledge, which is um, the pledge to try and promote um, women in arbitration mm -hmm. very early on. Um, and, and we've stayed true to our word. We, we have, every time we've created workshop or given the opportunity to uh, practitioners to present under our banner, um, we've proactively tried to engage with women mm -hmm. uh, in, in the industry. Um, when it came to um, the speaker selection, um, we know I, I first looked at the speakers we had last time and I decided it was best to invite new speakers because okay. um, I want more practitioners to come to the BVI, discover the BVI, discover the institution. Um, and then I started to go through um, my panel of, of arbitrators um, and then people um, that we as an institution have met, you know, in, at different conferences, people I knew were subject experts um, and, and I've proactively engaged with, well, you know, a majority of women. Um, and I think it's good. I mean, you know, we, we're not London. Mm -hmm. um, and if we, as you know, the institution, the only institution in the BVI with facilities that can do this kind of big event, um, do not promote diversity, then who will? Why do you think there is a lack or seems to be a lack of diversity in arbitration? Well, for a very long time. Um, so the first thing to know is international commerce originated and grew out of the US and Europe. Okay. Um, for, you know, the best part of the 20th century. Um, it then proceeded to grow in Asia, um, but the arbitrators club has for a very long time been a white male stale gentleman's club. Okay. Um, and it, it has been for a very long time a very small club. And so you would see the very same faces in pretty much every single arbitration. Um, that started to democratize itself in the 90s with the um, rise of um, Asian centers in Hong Kong and Singapore. Um, and it's only in the beginning of the 2000s that um, you've seen the emergence of um, centers in what I would say are developing jurisdictions. So they're not necessarily developing countries, Correct. but they unsophisticated jurisdictions when it comes to arbitration. Um, that started to, to play the game. And so that's when you started to see um, centers popping up in Africa, like in Mauritius. That's when you started to see um, institutions emerging in Latin America mm -hmm. um, and, and, and people starting to drive um, efforts in, you know, throughout the Caribbean, like in Jamaica and, and Barbados. Um, and that's when we kind of started to look into it in, in, right, the, BVI. in the BVI. 
Okay. Um, and so that's, we, we, we had a late start. Um, and, and, and when you look at the Caribbean, you know, this is not like Europe where you've got the EU, you know, creating some rules and they're the same for everyone. You know, you've got various jurisdictions. We all have different legal systems. We all have different arbitration acts. Um, Jamaica just uh, enacted a new arbitral um, legislation. It took them 25 years to get wow. to that point. Uh, we got lucky. We did this in five years in the BVI five years ago. Um, St. Lucia is still trying to get to that point. Uh, until right now, the arbitration um, legislation in St. Lucia uh, dates back to the 1900s. Um, and so this is also why um, you've got a lack of diversity. Uh, if you take practitioners operating in jurisdictions where the model law is not applied, where the arbitration or where more generally the legislation is not sophisticated, they can't sophisticate. Because mm. even if you send them to take on a Chartered Institute of Arbitrators course, they will learn really modern rules, Correct. modern techniques to carry out arbitrations. And then they go back home and they can't do anything right. with it. Um, and so this is, this is what we're trying to do. We're trying to, and, and it's not just the BVR and the BVR IAC. It's, it's, it's a bunch of people throughout the Caribbean, um, and I've mentioned some of them by name, um, that are trying to help sophisticate the region. Um, and, and this is happening throughout the world. You've got different people doing the same across Africa, and you've got um, you know, similar people doing the same in the US, because funnily enough, although they've got the OECDR in the US, uh, you still have discrepancies in legislation. So, for example, in California, until last year, you could not arbitrate until you were admitted to the bar mm. uh, in California, which precluded, you know, most of you know, yes. practitioners to operate in California. So, so this is not necessarily a Latin American or African or um, Caribbean problem. Uh, it's just that arbitration um, is in the process of his, of sophisticating outside of the mainstream centers that have been there for a very long time. Well, that's great. And I think it's it's commendable for the BVI Center to be one of the driving forces behind pushing for diversity within arbitration. Let's talk a little bit about the actual uh, arbitrators. There might be a misconception, I believe, in the general public that persons may feel that the center perhaps does not do arbitrations. Can you rectify that for us? Since the inception, tell us about your actively uh, pursuing arbitrations in the BVI. Right. So um, there are arbitrations in the BVI. And historically, the uh, commercial court has been in favor of arbitration in the BVI even before the institution was created. Uh, these arbitrations are taking place under the Arbitration Act of the BVI. Okay. Um, this is what we call ad hoc arbitrations. Um, it's kind of unrefined, if you mm -hmm. wish. And, you know, it, the, the, the process of that, these ad hoc arbitrations depend on the quality and the experience of the arbitrators that get appointed. Um, by creating an institution with modern rules to administer arbitrations, um, the BVI is stepping up its game as a jurisdiction. It's saying to people, you don't have to have ad hoc arbitrations in our jurisdictions. We've got an institution, you can bring all those potentially disorganized arbitration and arbitrations under the umbrella of an efficient, modern, world-class standard type institution. Um, this takes time. And, mm -hmm. and, and I need to give an explanation there before I, 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 um, we talk about numbers. Um, and that's important because it's not an overnight process. It is not an overnight process, and, and this is you know, a piece of information that has been discussed before the BVI even intended to get into arbitration. Okay. Because, and we talk about the roadblocks and why the BVI has achieved something that other countries throughout the world have struggled for um, or to achieve for you know, 30 years. Okay. Um, by the time you get in, you, know, you cannot start marketing a jurisdiction until you have an institution, until you have facilities. So, it's, you know, build it and they will come. So True. that's the first principle that you need to understand. Um, the second principle is, is that you build it and then you need to sell it and they will come. And selling it means convincing people that what you're proposing, what you're bringing to the market 
um, is equally as good as more established um, institutions that have been around Indeed. and have been used for a number of years. Um, and this is you know, a big chunk of what we, um, myself, Jeanette, Bren, uh, the board of the BVIC, and a lot of the practitioners um, involved with us have been doing for the last three years, um, which is selling the BVI as a jurisdiction, selling the BVI uh, IAC as an institution, convincing lawyers and general counsels and yes. clients more generally to insert our rules into their contracts and our model clause in particular into their contracts. Because it is only when a contract uh, dispute resolution clause refers or article refers to the BVR IAC that we will become the default institution Correct. to administer. So obviously you build it, you start selling it, people start believing in you, they add the clause to their contracts, mm -hmm. But then you still need to wait for those contracts to go bad. Um, and so yes, historically, um, there has been a five to 10 years delay between the time where you go wow. to market with an offering um, and the time that you start getting you know, um, cases. Um, Mauritius, for example, have had to wait five years to get the first case. Now, the good news mm -hmm. is we did better than that. Awesome. Um, we, so, you know, we, we were... We started operations at the beginning of 2017. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, we had a bit of a hiccup with Irma. Yes. Um, so we, we didn't get a full year there. Um, so we've been in operations with, let's say, two, for, let's say, two years. We already closed our first case okay. uh, between two international companies. Uh, we are currently managing two cases. All right. Uh, we had um, a hearing relatively recently at the center. So we know the facilities are working and we've got extremely positive feedback. People were surprised because they're used to, you know, going to Trinidad or yeah. to Latin American countries and things don't work. They went to the um, to Rita House, to the center, they plugged all the technology, <laughs> they switched it on and everything appeared it's good to go. like bandwidth. So, so really good feedback. Um, we've also been the appointing authority, which is basically us as an institution, appointing arbitrators to an arbitration five times, including wow. once where the uh, Secretary General of the Permanent Court of Arbitration in The Hague um, uh, gave us the substitute authority to appoint on their behalf, which is you know, a big accolade in the world um, of arbitration. So we've already done all of that. Um, we're also getting more and more feedback from firms throughout the world um, telling us that they're starting to put our clause into contracts. Uh, we got feedback from firms in the Caribbean. Um, I know personally people in Miami, New York, Washington that have told me they have used our BVR IAC clause in their contracts. We know people in Asia doing this. Um, and so now it's a waiting game. Yes. Um, we just need those contracts well, it sounds ironic, but we need those <laughs> contracts to go bad um, to get that work. Absolutely. Um, at the same time, obviously, we, you know, we're just not sitting back. We, we're carrying out a lot of activities to try and promote the BVI IAC locally, regionally, yes. uh, and internationally. Well, since its inception, you guys have been doing such a wonderful job at not only uh, bringing awareness to arbitration in the community, but also community outreach, uh, financial services, and the whole business tourism. Now, tell me about your take on being so heavily involved in the community and touching on these very uh, three pivotal points. Okay. Um, we were, we as in the institution, we were created by the BVI for the BVI. Um, we are a non-for-profit organization. Mm -hmm. um, so we are, you know, our mission is very clear. We are here to transform the BVR in a leading hub for international arbitration in the Caribbean and the Americas. In order to do that, we need to help sophisticate the local, the regional community, and the regional community um, to, to build a pool of practitioners that can become arbitrators or that can become counsel in arbitrations 
or people that are not lawyers, but that will need to support arbitrations, you know, translators, transcript writers, and so on and so forth. So we've engaged with a lot of different people um, over the last two and a half years. Um, we've also done um, work with um, kids in the yes. VVI. So we've got a... Training a, them to be <laughs> pretty much arbitrators themselves. It's and an initiation. The, yeah, initiation. Um, we, we've done uh, a lot of work with YEP. Uh, we've got a standing relationship with them. We, we're running a um, debate day yes. every year. Um, and, and we've got kids coming to sell the merits of arbitration and um, litigation. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, we've, we've got lunch, we, we answer their questions, and, and we try to give them an opportunity to learn about uh, the legal sector yes. in the BVI, um, which, which, which is not, you know, one of the two main pillars, like tourism and, and the financial services sector. But that was born out of the financial services Correct. sector and has become, you know, a big chunk of the economy. So... Um, so there's a big part of what we do that's about education, about training, about sensitizing people to what we're doing, why it benefits the BVI, why it's important as part of our global sales speech, but not just you know, for the BVI, see, for the jurisdiction. Um, and, and that's what I say to people. When I go to a conference in Miami, I, I don't go there to sell the BVR IAC, I sell the BVR experience for business people. And I'm explaining to people, well, if you've got contracts and you do business and you use BVR structures, you just need to know that we are an extreme, mo extremely modern um, dispute resolution mm -hmm. jurisdiction. I'm selling the commercial court as much as I sell the arbitration yes. center. I'm selling the hotels, I'm selling the restaurants, I'm selling the taxis. Um, because there's one big thing to realize with arbitration in particular versus litigation. Mm -hmm. Once you have a litigation clause that refers to the courts of the BVI and there is an issue with a contract, the firms have to come to the BVI. That's it. There is no other choice. Escaping, yeah. they, there is no escaping. The difference with arbitration is firms need to choose to come to the BVI. So everything needs to be lined up to facilitate that thought process. Um, and this is why having government support, and we, we've had support, tremendous support from the previous government and from the current government, um, while still remaining independent, mm -hmm. has been extremely helpful. Um, so for example, there is a new piece of legislation that offers a work permit waiver mm -hmm. for persons coming to the BVI for an arbitration. So whether you're, you're the arbitrator, you're a counsel, you are um, a, a transcript writer, um, you know, a translator, uh, you, you will arrive at the port of entry. Uh, we will have provided you with a letter saying that you're coming here Correct. for an arbitration so people cannot game the system. And, and you know, you will have the red carpet. Um, and, and this is part of the overall experience um, for business tourism. Um, so we've been working on, you know, on all those things. All fronts. Well, we thank you so much, Ms. Sal, for your amazing work, you and your team at the BVI International Arbitration Center. Viewers, of course, again, the BVI Arbitration Center will be kicking off Arbitration Week this November, the 16th, 17th, and 18th of 2019 this year. And that is going to be followed by the Arbitration Conference, Arbitration 2.0. So you want to check it out and stay abreast for details. Ms. Sal, thank you so much for joining us. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much. Is business slow? Cash flow down? Hosting an upcoming event? We can help. Advertise with 284 Media and take your business or event to the next level by enhancing your present marketing and messaging strategies. Allow our team of experts to create a personalized ad that sets your business apart from all the rest. This could be your business or event. So, what are you waiting for? Contact our marketing team at 284media at cctbvi.com. Advertising with us works.